I have another piece of sweet gum here, 13 and a quarter inches long, and it's not round, kind of shaped like that. Actually, would make a really nice uh, bird's mouth bowl, but not what we're going to do. I'm going to melt this on a worm screw, and I'm going to turn a long, skinny bowl. Okay. It's uh, mounted up. I've got my tail stock up against it. And it's actually spinning pretty good around 700 RPMs. So I'm just going to start taking some material off and start sweeping shape up. from the other direction now to try to save that bark. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and work on creating a shape for the base and then we'll get a tenon on it. Go from there. Seven hundred and twenty five. We'll leave that bark there. Now we can square this up. That should do it. Well, this is uh, pretty darn smooth right now. So I'm going to go over it with my negative brake scraper. And we'll just be almost ready to flip it around. That's pretty nice. Okay, this is pretty smooth from the scraping. I'm going to go over it with 80 grit. I might be able to sand just a little bit right in here while it spins if I turn it fast enough. But I think I'll be doing a lot of sanding like that. And maybe, maybe I'll just do <clears throat> all of it that way because there's not that much. So that's what I've decided to do. We're just going to sand it like this. I'll work it up probably to, might as well go to 400 and we'll get it flipped around. Okay, I've got a different chuck in with these heavy duty jaws. There, There's a dovetail right here on the internal portion and not many of the jaws have an internal dovetail. 
and it has a little gripping rings on it. Push that up against the face of them jaws and then tighten it up. And we'll start out slow and see how it spins. Should be the same. It's pretty true. 1300 RPMs, not bad at all. Now we're just going to hollow it out. I don't think I'm going to leave anything in the middle. I'm not going to make a little box or anything out of it. I just want to cut it as a fairly thin, long, elongated bowl. And we'll start doing it. Let's take care of hitting this edge where we need it. close. Okay, we can sand that. So now we'll go from here and get over into this area. Get that wall where you want. You don't want to cut this away before you do all of this. should end up a candy dish. Maybe a centerpiece where you could put a vase in there. Hmm. Well, I'm going to cut some more of this away and then we'll decide. Okay, one way or another, I'll come back and finish it tomorrow. I'm grab my face shield. Runs real good at 1400. Okay, we have about three quarters more to go. That'll give me around a five-eighths bottom. So we're just going to keep pouring down.
That's really pretty wood in there. Well, I don't know if I want to leave this or, or cut it off. Okay, a decision has been made. And I didn't have to make it all by myself. Somebody just gave me this and said, will that fit in here? Well, it will real soon. Let's see how far down that is. That's just about where I was going anyway, so let's go ahead and clean this up so that that fits in there nice. And we may have success. Yippee. Let's get this fit. I'm going to go celebrate with a cup of coffee. I think all this twisting in the video is from my camera. I finally reset it and found that the auto focus was messed up. Okay, it fits and looks good. That's about as far as I want to go down. I don't want to take the bottom anymore. Plus I'll need to put a little clearance underneath it, so that should be good. I'm going to go ahead and start sanding it up. And uh, I'll be sanding all of this without the lathe moving. I can sand this and the inside with it turning, but not this. Use my two inch here like this. And just go around and sand it. It actually sands really nice. So I'll be back when that's sanded up in this. And it'll be time to put a finish on it. This went quite well. It's all sanded up and I'm ready to put some finish on it. So I'm going to use uh, the polycrylic. But I'm going to use the Minwax sanding sealer on it first. It's also a water base. Okay, so I'm going to get the back side done. To let it dry really good, sand it and maybe get another coat or two of sealer on it. I'll get the finish on it and we'll be back when it's time to remove the tenon. Okay, I've got a block that I just turned to fit this in particular, but I'll be able to use it for other things. I'm going to use a piece of the padded non-slip material. and It's going to be somewhat of a friction fit. and I'm hoping I can pull the tailstock away and do the final cutting and sanding. I'm just tightening up and squaring it up against there. It's not an extremely tight fit, but enough that it should hold it. Let's see how it turns. Well, that's not bad. Alright, I'll get the tool rest around and we'll get all set up and start to cut that off. Okay, I'll start out with a half inch bowl gouge and remove most of it about 750 RPMs now I'm going to go to a 3-8 swept back bowl gouge And we'll still be at about 600. Okay, now I have a 3-8 spindle gouge. We'll finish cutting it off. And I'm pretty sure I won't need the tail stock. But I want to cut most of it away before we do that. So I'll go ahead and finish all of this sanding here off the camera and I'll come back when we're all finished. Here's the finished sweet gum turning from a piece of the tree that we had cut down about eight months ago. 
finished 12 and 7 8 across this way. The middle is 5 and a half inches and this end 6, so it has a little taper to it. This is 3 and 3 quarters tall there, and that's 3 inches. So this is higher than that, and that's 2 and 5 eighths. And all of the bark stayed on nicely. So it has a nice live edge going around it. Being long and smaller in diameter, I've heard people call these propellers. But when you're turning them, they make a noise like a propeller for sure. I didn't have any intentions on leaving this area here. But I saw this grain right there, and I really liked it. It has a line that comes up and around through there. Runs from one spalted area to the other into this one. I had to keep it. It's all about the grain. Well, asking for advice is sort of like reading instructions. Who's going to do that? But I did, and this is what I got. I think it's going to look great. I finished it with polyacrylic because I wanted to keep it just as natural as can be. And polyacrylic dries totally clear. Wipe on poly will give a slight tint to it, which I really like a lot anyways. But this just has its own look with this grain. It's beautiful grain. The rest of a sweet gum does not look like this. This was only because that area of the tree had stuff going on and it caused that. And I'm really happy with that. I really enjoyed turning this. It was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And a special thanks to all my subscribers. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you're new to my channel and you feel so inclined, please consider subscribing. Thanks again, and until the next time, I'll see you later.